So, welcome to this talk. My name is Alexander Bell. And the title of this talk is The End of the Ego's Darkness. So the ego and the evil which it creates collectively is like a sinking ship. It is going down for sure. So whatever you do, don't cling to it. You must let go of it or you will feel like you are sinking too. So, many people are trying to grapple with what appears to be occurring in the world at present, along with what has been prophesied to occur in religious texts, such as the Bible. The idea of the end of the world, as spoken of in the book of Revelation, could be seen to be extremely relevant at the moment. But then there are many spiritually inclined people talking about a coming golden age of peace and light on the earth. So what exactly is going on? Is there a golden age coming on earth? Or is the Bible right about Jesus coming to rescue those who give their hearts to God? Could it possibly be both? Well, it's important to first consider where all darkness, suffering hatred and misery originate. They all have their source in the human mind. From our mind, such thoughts move down into our heart and we feel all of these things in a deeply tangible way. These negative feelings then strongly influence our desire and our behaviour and we find ourselves being possessed and driven by forces which are greatly to our detriment Forces such as anger, hostility, fear, bitterness, resentment, hopelessness, hatred, and so on. And this is what is occurring en masse in our civilization at present. We can see it out there in the world, and we can witness it in our own heart to one degree or another. This is the effect of the ego, that totally dysfunctional mechanism of insecurity control, fear, selfishness, division and isolation. We are all under the delusion of the ego to one degree or another. And this is the human situation at present on this planet. The ego keeps us separate from true peace, deep joy, compassion, heartfelt selflessness and from real love. The ego poisons our heart with all the dualistic thoughts that it generates, absolutely all of which are based on insecurity and fear, because the ego itself is a mechanism of fear. It's like a parasite, which feeds us with negative thoughts, and those negative thoughts create negative emotions. And that's what the ego feeds upon. The the food source for our ego is the negative emotions that are created in our body and in our heart from those fearful and negative thoughts. So it's feeding itself. Now I can assure you 100% that the ego is not needed. 23 years of meditation has made this very obvious to me. Absolutely all of our dysfunction and suffering originate from the ego because it all comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of reality, which is what the ego gives us. It gives us a false but very convincing reality of separation, division and isolation. It divides up what is truly indivisible, the pure divinity of existence, which is reality, which is everything. One divine spiritual consciousness, one ocean, with many seemingly separate waves. Now, this this sounds like spiritual mumbo-jumbo to the ego, which has heard it all before, and just turns everything into a conceptual understanding to fortify its illusory mental reality. So really it's best not to attempt to understand the divine reality which lies beyond the boundaries of the ego, because it must be perceived directly to be understood. We cannot understand it with our thinking, logical, rational mind. However, it is very important to learn how the ego has intricately constructed this delusory mental reality of knowledge 
and understanding. This is what gives us our perception of what we think is real. This is the ego's reality. So as we learn to identify the ego's methods and tricks, then we can sidestep them and avoid getting our attention sucked into further illusion in our thoughts. As you avoid illusion, all that is left is reality. And this is what we all need to experience. Now let me tell you that the global ego is dying. And while we are attached to it, dependent upon it and invested in it, then we will feel like we are dying too. We will feel a sense of doom, a sense of terminality. We will feel, sense and perceive that the world is ending. Because from the ego's perspective, it is ending. But only because the ego is coming close to its expiry date. It is crucial to understand this. The place which most of us call home, which is our conceptual experience of reality and our self-identity, which it comes from the ego, this is disintegrating. Our safe box in which we have lived in relative comfort and security for so long is falling apart at the seams. But in fact, this is very, very good news. Because the reality which lies outside of that box is everything our heart has ever longed for. Atheism only exists in our world because of that box. Because outside of the box, the presence of a loving divine intelligence is utterly undeniable. So as long as we stay in that box, then we can continue to deny the existence of God. But once we decide to leave that box, once we investigate what exists outside of that box of our conceptual, mental, rational, intellectual beliefs and understandings, then we will see with our own eyes the reality of God's truth. It's a bit like having lived in a, inside a house with no windows for your entire life. And you only have electric lights and inside that house you have all the useful things you need there. But then someone comes to your house and says, Hey friend, why are you spending all of your time in here? Do you not realise what's outside? It's so beautiful. And the most glorious thing of all is this huge ball of fire which moves across the sky every day, radiating golden light and warmth everywhere, giving life to everything. It's truly astounding. Come outside and see it. Now, having seen both sides of the reality, having lived in the depths of the ego's suffering, darkness and pain, and then having learned how to step outside of its oppressive and restrictive confines through 23 years of meditation, self-investigation and pursuit of divine truth, I can tell you with complete authority that there is a glorious light outside of the ego's very limited walls. This glorious light gives life. It brings warmth and joy into the very core of your being. It illuminates and transforms all darkness and it connects us to our true spiritual home. Some call this light God. Some call it divine consciousness. Some call it love. The name really does not matter. What matters is that it is absolutely real and we are destined to reconnect and merge with it. Why? Because of the ego's expiry date. Because of our safe and familiar box disintegrating. We cannot escape our destiny and it is not wise to cling to the box because that box is made of fears. And where that box is going to is where our consciousness will go to if we cling to it. This is what people call hell. Those fears are returning to where they belong and we must not go with them. So all you have to do is let go. It's that simple. Let go of the box. But the fears that the ego has gotten us hooked on make everything complicated and full of threat. But in truth there is no threat when you let go. It's only holding on 
that fear continues to have a grip on us and that we feel threatened. But when we let go, we see there is nothing threatening. Nothing can threaten us when we let go. It's a delusion that we maintain by holding on, gripping tightly. Imagine your mind is like an open hand wanting to receive the truth. Yet, while our hand is physically in contact with the box of the ego, with the material from which it is constructed, which is essentially fear, the current of fear will flow from the structure of the ego through our fingertips and into our heart. We have to stop touching the ego's box, which is what we do when our mind engages with any of the ego's thoughts. They are all selfish and fear-based thoughts, based on insecurity. They are thoughts about ourselves, how we can get what we want, what we need, how we can feel more secure, how we can influence, manipulate and control the world around us, including the people. All these thoughts are thoughts about threat, lack, and how we can protect ourselves from the threats that the ego has convinced us are real. Outside of the ego's box, in the presence of the divine, there is no threat whatsoever. So to understand this, it's important to understand that we all occupy a spiritual reality. It seems material because that is where we all put our attention. But what is really going on, the interplay between the forces of good and evil, is actually occurring on a spiritual level. And then it becomes manifest on the seemingly physical world. It's a bit like a stream, where you're all living downstream, where the water's a bit more muddy and has debris that the water has collected on its journey from the source. However, with our attention, we can instantly relocate our awareness to the source of the stream, which is absolutely pure and pristine. This is reality, which is spiritual and divine. And it's where our our attention is meant to be, at the very source. There can be no pollutants or debris at the source. And this translates as no threat, no fear, no hostility, no darkness. All those can only be found downstream, which is what material reality is. Spiritual reality is upstream at the source, and the material reality, the world which we think is real, is downstream. And when our attention is focused on our material existence, our body and our emotions, then such pollutants are guaranteed. But when we take our attention back to the source, then such pollutants cannot be found there. This is why we need to practice transcending our thinking mind and perceiving the clear open sky that exists above the clouds. Because here is where we perceive the divine warmth and light of the eternal sun, which shines down into our hearts, bringing joy, peace and happiness. There simply is no threat outside of the ego. And the ego is essentially made up of the clouds of thought, all of which obscure the sun to one degree or another. This this is why all threat, all fear is illusory, because it's manufactured by the ego. And we do not need the ego. We can live outside of the ego and therefore free of all threat, fear, danger and insecurity. Again, understand that the clouds are now dissipating and as they do so, we start to realise that we dwell in a spiritual reality surrounded by the glorious and expansive space of the sky with the sun shining down upon us. Now of course it can be scary to perceive this when we once perceived we're in this safe, enclosed little box. But essentially there is nothing solid, i.e. concrete mental knowledge, to stand on. And it's true, there is absolutely nothing to stand on in the spiritual reality, where we all truly dwell. And this is what we have to remember. Fortunately, we have wings. We have wings of faith 
and trust. So we don't need to stand on anything. We don't need to stand on any beliefs or opinions or mental knowledge. We have wings of faith and trust. And they help us to dwell in this new reality, in this space above the clouds, without fear. We don't need to understand. We don't need to know. We don't need anything other than the love in our heart. And to have total faith in that love. To keep us in this realm where we belong. You may have heard the phrase, on the wings of love. And this is not just a metaphor. We have to leave the safe ground of our concepts, mental understandings and intellectual knowledge because they are like dead weights tied around our ankles. The time has come for us to ascend upwards in love, up through the clouds and beyond into the presence of the divine, the eternal sun, which is the only thing that nourishes our soul because everything else is starting to crumble beneath our feet. People generally need an incentive when great change is required because we get comfortable where we are. We have all gotten comfortable in the ego's safe and predictable realm where we feel relatively in control. We think we understand reality and we think we know how things are going to be. But I have to tell you that the ego's realm is about to get darker and significantly more uncomfortable as it begins its disintegration process. And this is the incentive that we all need to assess what we have built our sense of security upon. The paint is peeling off the ego's walls and it is becoming totally evident that these walls were constructed from the dark material of fear and insecurity. We must step away from them and from the ground upon which we had our feet planted for so many decades. It is all crumbling And now it is absolutely essential that we remember we have spiritual wings which will carry us away from all the chaos and confusion into a place of clarity, spaciousness and peace. The ego has reached its expiry date. It is a finite entity and was always destined to come to its end at this time. This time has been predestined and we have been warned about it in specific spiritual documents. There is no reason to be afraid because fear itself is part of the old paradigm. In fact, we should be deeply glad and excited that this time has come because it means the end of the egoic paradigm as a whole and the end of everything that flows from the dysfunctional, controlling, fearful ego. All that we would consider negative in human society, no less. So that means we have to let go of those qualities in ourselves. All that is negative and causes suffering must be let go of. This means fear, anger, hostility, doubt, insecurity, selfishness, greed, sadness, regret, victimhood, powerlessness, blame, judgment. The list goes on and on. And of course, it sounds like an almighty undertaking, but in fact it is the most liberating process we can go through. Every little bit more that we let go, the more free we feel. The only challenging part is dealing with the fear that arises about letting go. We've all gotten so used to being in control and deriving our sense of security from being in control that we are afraid that if we let go things will fall apart, or worse. We think that we will lose our way and get lost in the darkness. So naturally, it's hard to let go of the the one practice that has brought us all our security for so many years, remaining, remaining in control. But that was always an illusion anyway. We were never in control of our destiny. How much have we suffered despite being in control of our lives? How much less would we have suffered if we had let go and trusted? Our lack of trust is going to come to the forefront in a big way. And this is what will be the most challenging for most people. They will be terrified of letting go and thus cling on to that which is disintegrating. 
despite it pulling them into greater suffering, greater darkness and greater oppression. This is why courage is needed, and courage comes from our heart. It is the heart that trusts, whereas the mind only doubts. Which one are we going to listen to? I recommend strengthening your connection to your heart in every way you can, starting today. Because this is what will make it easier for you to trust and have courage and faith in the face of all the fears and doubts that your mind presents you with. And remember, none of them are real. Fear is but a shadow created by thought. Love is real. And you may not realise it yet, but love is capable of protecting you, guiding you and providing for you if you will allow it to. Love looks down upon us like the sun and it says, come closer to me. The closer we come to love, the more we feel its protection and providence in a very real and tangible way. The more we trust its divine power and we let go and put ourselves in its hands. This is what we all need to do because love is our new residence. We are leaving behind the world of the ego and relocating to the world of love. Now we may not be able to mentally understand this new world. In fact we cannot understand this new world. But we can perceive it when we let go of the need to mentally understand it. When we bring our attention away from our mind and back to our heart. This is when we trust. We trust that we don't need to know exactly what is going to happen. We don't need to know the future. We don't need to know anything, in fact. We just need to feel that space of trust. Trusting that we are safe, protected and going in the direction that is most beneficial for us on every level. Essentially what is happening is that we are letting go of fear and doubt and embracing trust and peace. There is literally nothing to fear. So when any fear arises irrespective of the subject of the fear, know that your ego is trying to pull you back into its realm. If you can stay in a place of peace and trust and just watch and listen to the fearful ego trying every trick it has to pull you into thinking in ways of fear and doubt, then you will become free from its grip. And this is so much easier than we realise. Imagine if a wide-eyed man came rushing up to you on the street, grabbed you by the arm, pointed up at the sky and said, The clouds are falling down. Quick, run for cover. You're in extreme danger. What are the chances you would even believe what he was telling you? You wouldn't even be concerned for a second, because you know that it's utter nonsense what he's saying. So the same is true with our ego which constantly whispers words of insecurity and threat non-stop, day in, day out. The only decision we have to make is whether we believe it or not. Once you get just a small taste of divine protection, providence and security, you start to realise that the ego just wants you to live in fear. It wants you to be separate from peace and it wants you to keep your eyes closed to the presence of a higher divine intelligence. It's like the story of the Garden of Eden. The serpent, Satan, hated God and he wanted to separate Adam and Eve from their loving father, from his providence, protection and love. So the serpent encouraged them to eat the apple, poisoned with its venomous delusion which is the delusion of fear, the delusion of separation. This delusion is separation from our spiritual source. It's like a wave thinking it is separate from the ocean. It is simply not true, although it appears that way because of the delusion given to us by the ego. Its dualistic thoughts, which it constantly dangles in front of our eyes like apples, are appealing but they are all poisoned with the fear that the ego is constructed from. If we taste them, we experience the reality of separation, which is simply a delusion, as is the reality of threat 
insecurity and lack. None of this is true. So we simply stop biting those apples. We turn and we walk away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which represents our dualistic thinking mind. And we walk towards the tree of life, which is our heart. This is where we can be healed from our delusion and have clarity and the truth restored to our mind and love restored to our heart. The false world of the ego is collapsing and primarily this is occurring in our own mind. The ego is making one last des desperate attempt to stay in control of our mind and if you look at society you can see that this is being mirrored collectively on the material level. But it can only succeed if we believe its fearful delusions, its fearful versions of reality, its fearful visions. And this is not only occurring in our mind, but it's being broadcast through the worldwide media. You can see that every arm, every tendril of the media is attempting to flood us with fear, darkness, hostility, pessimism, violence, cruelty. Every trick in the book is being used to try and make you feel afraid, worried for your safety, and to see the future in a negative light. This is where a lot of energy is being put, trying to get us to see the future as being bleak and dark. But again, this is the ego's illusion, and the media is trying to convince us to believe that this is the future. But it is not. My advice to you is to stop consuming what the media is offering you because all of its information is poisoned. It wants you to think that you are trapped, cornered, and that there is nowhere to escape to, that you must disappear off the radar if you are to be safe. But this is the fight or flight mentality of the reptilian brain, which is the very most primitive part of our being. You do not need to run away to disappear off the radar, to go and hide, or protect yourself, to arm yourself, or prepare to defend yourself. Relax, and don't buy into the psychological manipulation that is bombarding everyone via every aspect of the media. It's all part of the ego's delusion, which has become manifest in our material world through the media. Let your box of fear dissolve. Because if, as fear fades away, then truth is revealed. And I can assure you that the real news, the divine news, is very, very good news indeed. There is great cause to be happy, joyful, and even to celebrate. Because the venomous delusion of fear is now leaving our system, bringing our mind into the light of truth. And as we relax and stay connected to our trust and faith in the face of all the many fearful voices and messages, that is when peace comes into our heart and peace connects us deeply to truth also. Yes, the world as we know it, i.e. the world perceived through the lens of our ego, is most certainly ending. But providentially, there is a bridge appearing right before our feet. This bridge is one of faith, trust and joy because it is taking us away from chaos and confusion and ultimately from illusion. The bridge paradoxically leads upwards into higher realms of awareness and subtle sensitivity but also it leads inwards away from external phenomenon and information towards peace and trust in our heart. All that you need to do is continue to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving across that bridge of faith, peace and trust, even when you are unsure, anxious, doubtful or insecure. You are not walking alone and you will reach your destination, leaving all darkness, suffering and fear well behind you. So walk this bridge with happiness and trust in your heart because a new realm of beauty, peace and joy awaits you. 
So thank you for listening to this talk. And if you'd like to read my free life-changing book called How to Live in Love, then you can go to my website, which is alexanderbell.org. And you'll be able to download, download my book from there, as well, of all, as well as all the beautiful healing music I've composed over the past 20 years, which is also free to download. And you can read hundreds of my articles, watch some of my videos, and enjoy some of my free healing radio stations, and much more too. So all of that's at alexanderbell.org. So thank you for listening to this. I wish you well, and God bless you.